Ryan Frederick joining us to talk about the UFC pay-per-view here tonight. And we've got a lot to talk about on that show, including an incredible finish to the main event, which was uh, Kamar Usman and Leon Edwards for the UFC welterweight title. And the story of the fight is that first round, Leon Edwards had a good round. He got the back. He got the first takedown in UFC history for Kamara Usman and got the mount, got his back, body triangle, tried to finish, couldn't. And then from rounds two, three, four, and most of five, Usman just destroyed this guy. And well, Edwards, Edwards did okay in five. I mean, he did okay in five, but he was he was on his way to losing this fight to the point where the announcers were talking about how his he's broken, he won't look at his corner, he's done, he's finished. Yeah, they were basically saying that he was looking to survive five rounds as a win, and even though he was going to lose a lopsided decision. So at four oh four of the fifth round, all of a sudden Leon Edwards hits a head kick and he knocked Usman out cold. And he won the title. The place went absolutely crazy. He cut an incredible post-match promo talking about how he'd come from nothing. Look at me now. It was an incredible, incredible finish to the main event. There was really nothing in the match where, you know, I thought if there was a rematch, Leon Edwards had a good chance of winning the rematch. But it was still a great finish and uh, a very exciting fight for what it ended up being. And uh, Dave, we'll get your thoughts. And then uh, Ryan. I mean, the finish is probably one of the most memorable in UFC history, and um, I think that the knockout will, will probably be up there in knockout of the year, comeback of the year as far as in a fight. Um, you know, it's just one of the, you know, anything can happen in a fight. You watch the fight and you think, okay, I mean, they're, they're, the next thing, obviously, is that they have to go with a rematch. And Usman would probably be heavily favored in the rematch. But, you know... Um, Stuff happens, and this is another example, you know, kind of like Nunes and Pena and um, other, you know, there's many others. Um, I mean, but this was an interesting one because it wasn't like he got it early. I mean, he was just getting taken down and outstruck and just didn't have any fire, and then all of a sudden, I mean, he just set the whole thing up perfectly. He threw a, he threw a punch, and Usman ducked away from the punch, and he threw the kick, perfectly nailed Usman perfectly with the kick it was uh, similar to the I think the uh the the knockout that John Jones did on Daniel Cormier in a lot of ways where he set it up knew knew the the reaction that was coming and nailed it and uh you know 56 seconds left in a fight that he was gonna you know I mean clearly lose the decision in and uh so yeah one of the you know big big upset not I mean not one of the biggest upsets in UFC history in the sense that people knew that Edwards was competitive. But, um, you know, as far as a shocking finish in a fight that was going in another direction, yeah, it was one of the biggest in history. Yeah. Ryan, your thoughts? I mean, uh, yeah, I was, I was at that point in the fight where I was ready to start hitting sweet on my uh, 49-46 tomorrow just the scorecard, and it was just a uh, crazy like out of nowhere finish it's one of those where where you just kind of like it didn't make sense when it happened because Eastman was just so dominant dominant but Edwards threw he was faking the jab and that left that right side of Eastman's body was completely open with his hands low and he just landed that perfect head kick and it uh I mean it doesn't get uh yeah you know, finish doesn't get as good as that as good as that you know especially in the title side and yeah Edwards was he was completely done after the fourth round you could see in his corner his corner was in, his coaches were cursing him out he just had that body language of if i could just make it to the end this is a moral vic- moral victory but but yeah i pulled it out you know it, this is a crazy sport anything can ha- happen in the sport and this is just more more proof and usman he was this stopped usman at 15 straight ufc wins so uh, anderson silva stays at top with 16 straight to start off ufc career so it's just kind of a lot riding on the line, and yeah, we're going to get a third third fight. Uh, it's going to be in England, from what Dana White said. He talked about wanting to do Wembley Stadium, but at the wow. same time, he he at the same time he said he doesn't like doing outdoor shows because if if there's something we if there's one thing we know about Dana is he likes to control everything, especially when it comes to 
a show and the one thing he can't control is the weather and that would be the one thing that he said would stop him from doing it but he definitely well i mean the one thing if they if they do if they do it at wembley the problem is is that uh you got to make it an afternoon pay-per-view and i don't know if espn would be happy with a you know because a rematch should be a big show um you know bigger than this one and you know, if you put it on in the afternoon, your buys are going to be much lower than if you put it on at night. And and I don't think you can do a, you know, what would it be? It would be a 3 a.m. start. Well, not 3 a.m. The main card would be a 3 a.m. start. So the show itself would be a midnight to, you know, midnight to 6.30 a.m. type of show in uh, the U.K. And um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the rules are in Wembley if you can even do that. I know in a lot of parts of, you know, in uh, Dublin, I know you couldn't do it because that's one of the reasons that they never did you know, the big pay-per-view with Conor McGregor in Dublin because, or, or, you know, at, at Croke Park, right? Wasn't that the place that they were, that they were looking at doing? Yeah, Croke Park, yeah. Yeah, Park, yeah. yeah. The, the, the big problem, I mean, McGregor always wanted that was that they couldn't do the midnight show to be, you know, to be, to fit into the usual, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, pay-per-view level, you know, a pay-per-view time slot that, that UFC wants. Um, so, um, yeah, I'd be surprised if, if they would go to London uh, for it. But, uh, I mean, it would be gigantic to go in there and, and have that giant crowd. It'd be great, great. It'd be a fantastic atmosphere. I mean, I've seen, you know, um, you know, many boxing matches, obviously, at uh, Wembley and some of the stadiums in uh, the UK. And it's a, it's, it's a great, great atmosphere. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.